Hello everyone, my name is Maros Fjogios. And my name is Ioannis Tsogas. We are in Basel, Switzerland now, as we moved here last year, and uh, we are starting a new series on neuro interventions. And today we're going to speak about the M-SAFE technique. The modified SAFE technique. So, what is the modified uh, aspect of this new technique? For this technique, we use a balloon guide catheter and we perform an aspiration maneuver or two aspirations maneuvers before the retrieval of stent retrieval. So the idea is to perform a, a reduction of the clot before we do the simultaneous uh, combined maneuver with a stent retrieval and an aspiration catheter. And uh, where is this uh, especially good? We think that is the best method uh, for the distal ICA occlusions or for the occlusions with uh, big clots. So in this case we have a patient with a carotid T occlusion on the left side, a relatively young patient. And we see here that in this T perfusion there is a big mismatch uh, the left side because of this occlusion, but uh, we saw in the CT angiography that we have a good collateral status uh, over the ACOM. Okay, so what uh, we see here is a typical setting. Uh, we start with an 8 French femoral sheet uh, and then we exchange over a long teruma wire for our balloon guide catheter, which we place in the proximal carotid. And then we made a serial and we see that uh, there is this uh, distal occlusion of the ICA uh, proximal of the origin of uh, PICOM. We uh, proceed the aspiration catheter over the micro catheter over the micro wire. As we can see here in the series, we have large clots within the proximal ICA also, and then the occlusion in the distal part of the carotid. Here we start by navigating with our wire to the MCA, and again, as in the same, uh, in the SAVE technique, uh, you can park your aspiration catheter in the cavernous segment of the ICA. You don't have to go all the way to the carotid T. Uh, you just first go with your microcatheter distal of the clot in the M1. And, um, Our target is to place the microcatheter in the inferior trunk of MCA. Exactly. So we have published this before and others have also shown this that uh, it's better if you navigate towards the inferior trunk. Uh, you then have better results and you can see it here. That's the typical um, positioning in the inferior trunk of the MCA of the wire. Then we are pushing also uh, the microcatheter towards the M2 segment and then as you can see here the catalyst, the aspiration catheter is navigated towards the infraophthalmic segment. There are two methods to uh, navigate to the inferior track of MCA. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use the microwire and push the microcatheter over the microwire or we can push the microcatheter under aspiration and without the microwire. Mm -hmm. So uh, another important thing is that um, is the placement of stent retriever. Uh, like uh, we described in the SAFE technique, very important is to place the stent retrieval distally of the thrombus, so the thrombus is the proximal, the first third of stent retrieval. Exactly, and that's why also it's important to take longer stent retrievers. So, in my experience, it's not as good as using a 4x30 or 4x40 if you have it. Uh, and um, we, we actually stopped using the 4x20. So, again, take the longer stent retriever and also try to go distally so you are with the first third of your stent retriever at the clot. Okay, so here you can see the deployment of the stent retriever. Uh, so the microcatheter is still in the inferior trunk, we push the uh, stent retriever towards the tip of the microcatheter. It's a long stent retriever, a 4x30 uh, trivo. Uh, and then you can see that uh, we unsheet the distal part and then we start pushing with a wire. So we apply the push and fluff technique uh, and then you can see here that it's fully deployed uh, in the carotid and the M1. We always try to remove the microcatheter like it's dis described in this bare wire technique. So we have uh, more volume in the aspiration catheter for aspiration. Exactly. So the idea is to maximize your aspiration volume uh, and that's why you remove the microcatheter. A question that sometimes comes is uh, if we have uh, 
uh, a dislocation of the stent retriever by removing the micro uh, catheter. Personally, I never have this problem. So uh, again, it's, it's not really an issue. You can remove your micro catheter uh, when you have the stent retriever in place and that maximizes the force with uh, your suction force with the aspiration catheter. And especially if we have big clothes and we use long stand retrievers. Okay, so the next step, as we can see here, is to connect the aspiration pump. And you can see we are still in the free segment uh, of the carotid. Um, we have flow towards the pump. The pump is connected to aspiration catheter. And the aspiration catheter is uh, still in this uh, free segment. So we push the aspiration catheter over the wire of the standard river towards the clot. Exactly, and as you can see here, at some point we arrive at the face of the clot and then we don't have any more flow in the system. You can see in the pump that there is no flow of blood. Uh, and then you can wait for a couple of seconds there to actually be able to suck the proximal part of the clot. Sometimes, when you have older patients with a lot of curves, uh, in the carotid, you may experience some problems uh, pushing an aspiration catheter towards the face of the clot. Uh, and uh, in those cases, you can use the micro catheter again to uh, be able to navigate towards uh, the clot. So that's like in 5% of the cases, if you cannot achieve uh, a forward position of the aspiration catheter, mm -hmm. then you can use again your micro catheter uh, in the aspiration catheter to have a better transition towards uh, the face of the clot. If I see that there are a lot of curves of internal carotid artery, I leave the micro catheter in the aspiration catheter until I reach the clot with the aspiration catheter and then I remove completely the uh, micro catheter. Okay, so if we continue now to our video, you can see now we are removing uh, or uh, retrieving the aspiration catheter towards the um, free segment uh, of the carotid. Uh, and if you check the pump, you can actually see that at some points we have again flow in the system. And also, really important, if you check your filter, you can actually see that the, you have reduced the clot burden from the carotid. So when you do then your maneuver with a standard retriever, your safe maneuver, you can actually remove all of the clot and then have a first pass effect that we actually uh, want to achieve every time, right? Uh, that's really a real photo during the procedure and not at the end of the procedure. Exactly. So it's after this first maneuver, you can see the reduction of the clot by only aspirating. So actually the idea is you, you do something like an adapt before doing a save maneuver. Right. Uh, and you use your stent retriever as a protection device because the distal part of the clot is fixated by the stent retriever. So when doing uh, the aspiration maneuver, you cannot lose any distal emboli in the periphery. So again, that was the first step. You do a reduction of the clot by doing aspiration and then you advance again your aspiration catheter towards the face, the reduced face of the clot. You can see here, you can do, go distally, more distally with the aspiration catheter. Again, we have vacuum now in the system. So like in uh, safe technique uh, described, uh, we use uh, now the backlog uh, syringe um, connected to the aspiration catheter and then uh, we connect the aspiration pump to the guide catheter. So we have in this free segment of carotid artery um, permanent uh, aspiration. Exactly. So the point is, in the moment that you have vacuum in your aspiration catheter, you don't really need a pump there. You can um, keep the vacuum with the vacuum syringe. But when you remove the whole unit, stent retriever, clot, aspiration catheter, you then need permanent aspiration in your guide catheter, in your balloon guide catheter in this um, in this situation. Uh, and that's why you need the pump because you then have permanent aspiration. Uh, and even if you remove some clots, uh, then you still can aspirate and remove the remaining fragments of the clot from the tip of the balloon guide catheter. Uh, that's the point or the problem with the vaclock syringe. You can only aspirate for a couple of seconds if you're in a free flowing segment, right? right? So that's why we use the pump on the guide catheter and we switch with the vac lock on the uh, aspiration catheter. 
we inflate the flow gate balloon, right? Something that uh, we do at the last step. And um, I want to add uh, something more before uh, performing the last maneuver uh, and after the first aspiration. If you notice that you have a permanent vacuum on uh, the aspiration catheter, then it is recommended that you pull out, you remove the aspiration over the wire of stand retriever uh, so you can clean it and then again push it back to the cloth. And this step we, we saw the retrieval of the whole unit through the balloon guide catheter. So one important thing while removing uh, the unit stent retriever uh, clot and aspiration catheter from the patient is that you have to do this really slowly. So this is something that Vladimir Kalashek has posted on Twitter. Uh, if you don't follow him, uh, go there and start following him. He has really good tips on, on a lot of uh, new interventions. And uh, what he's saying is you have to remove it like a sticker from a car windshield. So it's like really slowly trying to remove the clot uh, so you don't have any distal fragments while doing this. You can see now we deflate the flow gate, but we still don't have any flow. In, in most cases, when you have this situation, you have... Spasm of the carotid artery. Exactly. You have uh, some uh, proximal spasms of, of the carotid. Uh, and uh, what you can do is just um, position uh, the tip of the balloon guide catheter a little bit proximally uh, and then see if you have flow, if you can aspirate. That's what I do here in the first step. And you can see still no flow in the system. So then we had the idea that it's occluded from clot uh, and that's why we, we remove the whole balloon guide catheter. Under from, aspiration, always under aspiration. Exactly, under permanent aspiration. And that's a really interesting point. You can see the clot burden in the sheet. So it was a really, really long clot. And we even uh, lost some, some uh, fragments here uh, in the femoral sheet, uh, which we then had to remove with uh, our balloon guide, or you can also remove them with a needle. In this case, we have to navigate again to the internal carotid artery. And as you can see here in the angiogram, we had a first pass, a good first pass effect. Uh, you can see that uh, the carotid, the media, and the anterior were again open. And uh, here you can see the follow-up CT scan. Again, remember this was a really big clot in the carotid T and also in the proximal carotid, and that's an excellent result on the CT. And clinical outcome of MRS3. So a good clinical outcome for this kind of uh, occlusion. So we know from the published studies that uh, the recanalization rates in uh, first pass effect uh, for the distal carotid occlusions are not so good like the M1 occlusions. And that was the reason why we developed this uh, technique. Uh, we wanted to reduce the clot uh, before performing the uh, thrombectomy maneuver. And that's something that we already have seen. Exactly. So we, we have published uh, some results on this technique uh, where you can see the whole description of the technique, the materials we use, and also the results that are better than with other techniques on the carotid T. Uh, and again, our aim is the first pass effect, the um, good recanalization with our first pass, and we are able to achieve that uh, with this technique in the carotid T occlusions. So we hope that you enjoyed our video on the MSAFE technique and we are looking forward for your comments. Exactly. So if you have any suggestions or comments, uh, post them underneath the video. And uh, we are going to be back in a couple of weeks uh, with a new video on a technique or new technique for tandem occlusions. So a simultaneous treatment of the carotid occlusion and the intracranial uh, M1 occlusion, for example. So Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can uh, get all the updates when we upload new videos. And thank you very much for your attention.